Good morning. Good morning, everyone who is here this morning, and all of you who are joining us online. Good morning on this very special sacred day. Welcome. Welcome to our Good Friday Remembrance Service. Our time together this morning is framed by seven moments from the Passion of Christ. As you arrived, you were given a piece of rosemary. One of the meanings of the herb, rosemary, is that it is for remembrance. And in a few moments, you will be invited to approach the cross with your rosemary sprig and place it in the basket because Today, we are here to remember. Along this way, we have walked with Christ. Along this way, we have shared his table. Along this way, along this way. So as Margaret has, has said, we were given a piece of rosemary. If you didn't, this basket with some here and there's people still handing it out. But I invite you now to come forward and as you come forward, let the, let the herb do its work and remember and place your sprig at the foot of the cross. If you don't have a piece, there's a basket up here with some in it. We've had abundance of rosemary given, it's wonderful.
for those who've just arrived, if you'd like your rosary, bring it forward. I also would um, offer a sincere apology to those sitting on that side. We did not realize that our arrangements would impede your vision of the screen. We will learn. If you'd like to come forward, go around. Come. Put your rosemary at the foot of the cross. It's the invitation. To remember, to remember, to remember. Along this way, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let us stand and sing. There is a green hill far away. Please sit down. On this day, we recall the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear John's account, we focus on seven moments during that day, and as darkness still seeks to conquer the light, pause to reflect on our own sin and that of the world. At the end of each reading, we will keep silence as a candle is extinguished to mark the prevailing darkness of this day. Shall we all pray together? God of daytime and the night time, God of light and darkness, God of joy and sorrow, we worship you. Through you alone, we are able to know that even in the darkest hours, hope is present through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first moment. 
ecce homo. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the Son of God. And we pray together, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Here is the man, Ecce Homo, the Roman prefect said as he offered Jesus to the crowd. No name now for this nuisance man whose silent threat causes alarm. Yet even the no name, Ecce Homo, has become the title for paintings, scriptures, and verse over the centuries. A no-name title becoming his title. And a no-name handing over soon to become his fate. Ecce homo, the word made flesh. Moment two, Gabbatha. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. 
Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. And they cried out, away with him. Away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. We pray, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Our reflection is ours as we sing the Servant King. Please stand.
the third moment, Golgotha. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am the king of the Jews, Pilate answered. What I have written, I have written. Let's pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The article was finished and passed on to the editor for approval. Within a few minutes, the call came. Are you sure you want to say this? She asked. It's what happened, the reporter replied. Those were the words that were used. But they don't quite reflect our brand, fit in with our readers. Maybe you could say it seemed or, or it appeared that or she was unclear. But she wasn't. She was very clear about what was said and when it occurred and what was meant by it. Very clear. Okay. The editor responded, if it goes wrong, I'll take the flack. Let it be as you have written. Pilate, in a moment of bravery, insists on what has been written. No fudging. The king of Jews it is. Even in the face of the crowd, Sometimes it has to be said as it is. Even when the mood of the crowd threatens, sometimes it needs to be said as it is. The fourth moment, casting lots. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us reflect as we sing the hymn, And Can It Be?
This is the fifth moment. Here is your mother. The reading is from John chapter 19, verses 26 and 27. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. We pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a moment, all can change. That moment of fearful, angelic promise. That moment of Bethlehem's birth pain and first nursing. That moment of fleeing. That moment of apparent rejection. That moment. So many moments with him, and now this moment, this handing over as the care given to him from birth to death is now received from him and in this moment a new home for him and for me. Amen. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. finished so final a word
But what is ever really finished, accomplished, completed, except life itself? A race run, a record set, only serve to herald the next attempt, a new champion and holder of the prize, but once for all, a death of life, an obscuring of light, bringing darkness in its wake, is a moment of completion, is echoed with finality. Finished, the end, extinguished light, but only till a brighter dawn. The seventh moment. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. We pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Seven moments of the ordinary. Crowds, fear, power, inhumanity made ordinary. And so it continues as those with power quash unrest, break limbs, execute troublemakers, instill fear. As the chilling ordinariness of shoes and spectacles piled high while those who had chosen and bought them cleaned them and warned them, are nameless numbers in a place of everyday death. No names, each loved by God, but treated as less than human by others who, being loved by God themselves, risk their very humanity. And we pause, and we wonder, in seven moments of ordinary violence, would we be different? Other days will soon come. The deep, deep sorrow of a garden visit met with a name. A fear-filled room gathering an unexpected visitor. A sad path home becoming a way back to hope. A picnic transformed into a place of restitution. But for now, the candles are extinguished and the darkness prevails. Let us pray. We pray for those for whom the terrifying has become the ordinary, for the victims of warfare, for children and mothers unable to live in homes that are their own, for fighters who have become immune to the cries of others, and for politicians 
who hear only praise. Lord of the cross, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. If we have become immune to those who suffer, who have no name, who count for little, we ask for forgiveness for those times when we have failed to speak or to act. Lord of the cross, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who remind us that even in the shadows of pain, humanity may shine forth. We give thanks for those who care for the dead and the dying, for those who bring hope. Lord of the cross, hear our prayer. Lord of the cross, in you alone do we find our hope, even when hope is gone. Amen. I'm going to invite you in a minute to sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And it is the final hymn for our Good Friday Remembrance Service. And during that hymn, you are invited to come forward and to take rosemary with you today. Take it home, for rosemary is for remembrance. It's often used as a symbolic last action in a funeral, as mourners place a sprig of rosemary on the casket. Today we've placed our rosemary sprigs before the cross, and now because this is not the end, we will collect our rosemary and take it home to remember. Let us stand.
Please be seated. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes and weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths according to the burial customs of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in that garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation, the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. We'll have a final prayer, and then I'll invite you to go in peace, and we will leave quietly. Let us pray our responsive prayer. When hope has left, still we watch. When darkness prevails, when the road is hidden, Christ of the cross, hold us in these moments as we wait for a garden vision, a mealtime revelation, a locked room blessing, and a lakeside renewal. We go in peace. <laughs>